Right, guys, we are now on the sixth commandment. Uh, the fifth one that we just covered was honoring thy mother and father. That's the most important thing we got to remember about human interaction. The second most important thing, according to the list given to us in the law, the instructions delivered verbally from a giant flaming ball of fire that descended down on Mount Sinai, yelled unto the entire three or four million people that were down below that mountain uh, back a couple, you know, a few thousand years ago. Uh, here's what he said. This is one that a lot of people are probably familiar with. Thou shall not kill, as translated in a lot of versions. Uh, however, if you look at the word, and there's a lot of translations that are a little more accurate, it says, thou shall not murder. Okay, If you read the Bible from cover to cover, it's completely filled with combat. Good guys versus bad guys. Okay, And so, in a lot of cases... In, in the lawful execution of warfare or the judgment of evildoers or to prevent evil, God has commanded his people to not only defend themselves, but also track down and destroy the enemy. Okay, And so sometimes that is something that happens in the lawful application of lethal force. And of course, people today recognize that there are certain like lawful applications of lethal force. If there is a a murderer running around who is murdering people, which is different than killing, murdering is the unjust, unwarranted killing of other humans, okay? If you got someone like a mass shooter running around, the police do have legal force to legally kill that bad guy, okay? And if you have an ho a home invasion and someone comes in like Freddy Krueger or whatever with his knives in his fingers or an ax and he wants to do your family a bunch of harm, you have every right in the world to use lethal force against that bad guy. It's actually all over in the rest of the book. And you guys can watch. I did a video um, a few years back that's a pretty good one on this topic where it goes into all the different examples of the lawful execution of uh, lethal force in the Bible. And um, like even King David, I mean, that guy's got a way bigger death toll than in like a, who's an American sniper guy, right? Chris Kyle. Like his death toll was pretty huge. He was quite the warrior guy, okay? And a lot of people look up to him, but they don't understand the context of the, in the reality that um, the lawful execution of lethal force is totally warranted. And, and the Ten Commandments does not make that illegal. The Ten Commandments says thou shall not murder, okay? Uh, some versions in the English... Um, it doesn't come off at, correctly, okay, when it says thou shalt not kill. Um, because from cover to cover, it's just filled with, um, I mean, you can read the story about Abraham rescuing Lot from the people that kidnapped him. And they went and did a raid, like a special forces raid, nighttime deal, and uh, took out a bunch of dudes to get Lot back. And there's just like, the whole book is full of those stories. And so that's something important, even... The teacher that came way later, uh, commonly referred to as Jesus of Nazareth, right? He even told his apostles, he's like, all right, guys, here's the deal. I have a mission I have to go on. They're going to arrest me. That's fine. Let them arrest me. However, for you guys, you, got, you guys need to arm yourselves because it's about to get rough. Go ahead and buy a sword. And if you don't have any money to buy a sword, then go ahead and sell your cloak and get some cash and get yourself a sword, a gladius. Like back in them days, that would have been the Romans' uh, main infantry weapon. So like an AR-15 or whatever. Just not to go around swinging it everywhere, which Peter later did kind of in a, in a zealous attempt to try to protect his, his buddy there, right? But they, they didn't understand that he had to be arrested. That was the point of why he was there. He was going to have to go and go through that stuff. Um, but he even... Jesus told the apostles specifically to arm themselves with swords and to deter bad guys from from unjustly arresting them before they could complete their mission because that wasn't quite their time to go yet, okay? And so um, you can watch the video I did. I think it's called something to the effect of like, why the Bible is not for wussies, <laughs> 
or something like that, okay? It's, it's a pretty good video. I go through a lot of the history and actually put up all the different stories of what happened there on the lawful uh, use of, of violence and uh, force and deadly force in the scriptures to preserve good, right? I don't think there's anyone that could argue that a cop should carry a piece and should be allowed to protect people with it, right? Anyone who argues that is not very sharp, okay? If that was, I mean, seriously, guys. Plus, here, there's a weird attitude problem that you'll run into sometimes when people, and I'm, this is where I'm going to like maybe catch a little heat, okay? There's a lot of churches whose primary function is to entertain people by singing songs that make them feel special, which is great, and having the piano lady and the worship choir later waving their arms and all this business, but they don't spend a lot of time reading the book, okay? Now, if you do read the book and you actually, you don't just read little sentences out of certain parts of the book that you like that convey that one attitude, there's a lot of people that have the mistaken impression that we're supposed to be non-interventionists or pacifists even. That's not true at all. If you read the book from the beginning to the end and don't skip parts you don't like, you will very quickly get a reality check. So if anyone, if you ever run across someone with that attitude, that's okay. I have a peaceful demeanor too. I have a sunny disposition. I don't want to get in fights, but there are times when there are really evil bastards on the face of the earth that need to be dealt with or that need to be restrained from doing their horrible stuff, okay? And the only thing necessary for the absolute triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. And so the fifth, or excuse me, the sixth commandment, okay? Thou shall not murder. You can't take your personal vengeance out on someone or you can't kill them to take their money. You can't kill them for unjust reasons, unwarranted reasons, okay? Because their blood will be on your hands. And murder is definitely prohibited, okay? Uh, so don't be murdering people. But you got to understand that there is a difference between murdering and killing in the scripture, okay? And so that's something that I think would be highly advantageous to study out. Check out the video I did a while ago, Why the Bible is Not for Wusses. <laughs> and don't get bent out of shape, guys. We try to keep it lighthearted and so that normal people can absorb this okay if you if you want a guy if you want me to put on a robe get a microphone and put the plant next to me to duplicate uh, uh, whatever environment you're used to then change the channel this is just a conversation with normal dudes trying to figure out what our father actually commanded us to do straight from his words thou shall not murder okay all right